To talk about the history of melanin, we first have to break down what melanin is. Melanin is a pigment found in most living organisms that gives color to hair, skin, eyes, and other parts of the body. We have melanin to protect the skin from harmful UV rays and help people retain folate that babies need during pregnancy. As people moved out of regions around the equator and needed less sun protection and also needed to allow more sunlight to come through to develop vitamin D, we began to have variations in the amount of melanin in our hair, skin, and eyes. In the 1990s, the team that originally researched melanin back in the 70s was able to use NASA data of surface level UV readings around the world to confirm their hypothesis that the same skin tones had developed in different areas around the world throughout history based on the amount of UV available in those areas. Their map of human skin color has become accepted and widely used when teaching about melanin in human bodies. Along with her research, Jablonski has acknowledged that no discussion or work with melanin in human beings can be looked at solely from a scientific standpoint. And that is because of how melanin and particularly skin color has been tied to different moral, intellectual, and social traits throughout history. From various social media platforms such as Twitter and Instagram hashtags like hashtag melanin and hashtag black is beautiful to YouTube with videos ranging from TED Talks to personal vlogs to creating and sharing art, people are discussing and reclaiming what it means to be melanated. There are wonderful folks like Dr. Jablonski who has taken her research and used it to create curriculums in South Africa where she's based out of. There's Dr. Sarah L. Webb, who shares her amazing amount of knowledge on colorism and healing from it through blogs, podcasts, books, and videos for children, educators, and adults. Artist Angelica Doss took her own experiences and feelings from how she was treated as a person with a different skin tone than most of her family growing up in Brazil and turned them into a global conversation and collaborative art project called the Human Eye Project. She photographs volunteers and matches them to their universal Panatone color to prove that no one is really black, white, red, or yellow, like the first humans were categorized as. She puts installations of the project up around the world and also goes into classrooms to have art workshops where children can do the project themselves with art supplies and learn about their own skin and the truth behind it. As we celebrate Juneteenth and honor the history of this holiday, please consider the work that is being done at this very moment around the world 
and in our local community to forward the conversation and education about melanin, race, identity, and society to create change and move humanity to the kind of future where everyone can thrive. Happy Juneteenth from the Greensboro Public Library and our wonderful staff. We hope to see you soon. And when you do come in, check out some of the great materials on melanin by these wonderful creators. <laughs>